Hey, is it hot enough for you? How about something really steamy? Yeah, that's right. Woo boy! It's hot out here. Or is it just the car? Hot, hot, huh, I want something cool. And this car is kinda cool. We are now in the year 2023, and this is the complete redo of the Kia Sportage. And specifically, this is a Sportage X-Pro Prestige, all-wheel drive. And it's a real, real fit competitor to the compact SUV class. And this particular model is a little more uh, geared towards outdoor stuff. Now, if you remember a long time ago, it must have been maybe, uh, I don't know, two weeks, we, uh, we went on a real, little ride together in the Subaru Forester Wilderness. Well, this kind of falls into the same general category, in my opinion because it is designed for the active lifestyle. An X-Pro lifestyle, which that's X is in the numeral 10. So maybe it's a 10, 10 Pro. Let me look at this here. X-Pro 10 Pro, ah, well anyway. It's designed with a few little goodies on it to make it a little more habitable if you find yourself driving in a rugged environment. And it's a beautiful car and it's very heavily redesigned by your friends at Kia to uh, kind of jump on top of this whole uh, more adventuresome type of SUV right down to the black wheels. You see a lot of black wheels and you see a lot of more aggressive tires on these guys and, and a little bit more ground clearance. Not a whole heck of a lot more ground clearance but definitely more than your standard operating Sportage type maybe from last year, the year before, decade before that. It uh, also has a, a bunch of nice little internal features. And it also, friends and neighbors, had something that it did to me that I'm still trying to figure out. It could have been a poltergeist or some ghosts or I don't know what, but something very strange happened unless I've completely lost my mind and it hasn't repeated itself. And I have to tell you all about it. That's, a, that's what we call an interior thing. But now, let's look at what motivates this fine looking little SUV. Now here's something that makes me happy. It's a nice little 2.5 inline four cylinder engine that does not, I repeat, does not have a turbocharger. And yet it puts out 187 horsepower and 178 pounds of feet in terms of torque, which is, I think, perfectly adequate for the size and weight of this vehicle. And it should also deliver some pretty decent fuel economy. Uh, but Kia decided to go with a normally aspirated power plant, and I I salute them for this because I'm big on this uh, normally aspirated stuff, as you may uh, as you may have figured out. Just because of the complexity and extra heat generated by turbocharging that I don't like, but I mean, God knows you can get a lot more power and torque with turbocharging. But hey, but as we uh, normally have here nowadays, see this here, plastic. That's your intake runners, and again, they use these, I say plastic, it's probably some kind of a little bit more sophisticated composite than just calling it plastic, I mean, you know. But the thing about that is, uh, they can uh, 
configure the inside of it to do all kinds of neat things to the airflow, which will result in better combustion ultimately in the combustion chamber. That's why they do it. But as you can see, it's, it's very straightforward. It's just a little old straight four. Straight forward, see? Straight four, you understand? You follow me? You follow me? Uh, and back there, there's no turbocharger. I don't see none. You see it? Uh, there's no turbocharger back there. Nothing like one. But what it does have is a nice little motor. Yes, indeed. What else can I say? Well, so far it hasn't burned up in this heat. <laughs> and the air conditioning works great. These are very important things in these trying times. But uh, that's what our little Sportage uses to get around. And there are other versions. There are, there are hybrid. I believe there's a hybrid version. I think there's a plug-in version. But this is just a good old straightforward apple pie uh, gasoline motor with your direct fuel injection. And I like it. It's as perfect. you can see, as you can ganderize, there's some really nice looking black wheels on this uh, uh, X-Pro. I really like, I do believe they're made at sheathed, sheathed out of a unique and futuristic aluminum alloy. Or it's just an aluminum alloy, I don't know. But I like them. They seem to see this black wheel aggressive tread thing that goes on with these vehicles. It's kind of nice. It makes them look more... Uh, for lack of a better term, more purposeful. Now, speaking of function, let's check back here. Let's check, see what we have back here. Aha! I see. I see great things. Pretty good space back here in the cargo area. I approve. And what do we have here? We'll look here. Oh, and there. Your temporary spare tire, good for you. No run flats here, no motility kit. You know how I feel about that. You can take that with your turbocharger and just go with it. And here, oh, well, what have we here? It appears I have come upon the Monroni on this vehicle. And as you can see, it is in fact, I wasn't lying to you, it's a 2023 model. And uh, the base price is around uh, $36,790. And with all the goodies, and there are, is additional installed equipment, comes out to $38,815. There's quite a bit of stuff on this thing, too. Uh, fly. Gee, it must be Australia. Bloody hell. Uh, and then we have a MS, uh, MS it, you heard all that, an EPA rating of 23 miles per gallon city, 28 highway with a 25 combined, which is right in the middle of the pack. That's pretty much what they all get if you uh, keep your foot out of it. And that's all good. That's all nice. What else didn't I tell you before? Oh, I know what I didn't tell you before that I should have told you. Should have told you that this thing has uh, an eight-speed automatic transmission. And here's the interesting stuff. Without trailer brakes, you can tow a 1,653-pound trailer, which is pretty specific. Uh, but if it does have trailer brakes, you can tow a 2,500-pound trailer with it. So they say. And that's not bad. That's quite impressive, actually. For such a wee guy. But a charming wee fellow is it, it is. And down here, let's have a quick look while we're here. Let's see that. Let's go down here and see what we can see. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Coming up. There we are. There's your independent suspension right there. Got a nice big stout looking coil. Kind of reminds me of, uh, <laughs> of all things. Here's the other side here. Uh. It actually reminds me of the uh, Yukon Denali I tested not too long ago. So look at what we have here. Underneath our beautiful Sportage X-Pro. We seem to have a bit of cladding underneath to protect you in them light off-road situations. Now I think, of course, it's this plastic stuff that is primarily used to increase the aerodynamics. 
but it would still offer some protection and you know it's a lot I mean something's not going to bounce up and hurt the engine as far as get in your belts or anything like that you know I just had a Ram 1500 that uh, didn't have much in the way of skid plates and while the major hard parts of the engine were protected by cross members from the frame uh, the belts and everything else were right there anything could bounce up in there and hit it because uh, it didn't have any, any kind of, it was a four-wheel drive truck, but it didn't have an off-road package, so it didn't have any of that nice protecting stuff. But this has also got, looks like a fairly decent amount of protection over the fuel tank. So I think you can take this thing into light off-road situations without worrying too much about it. I mean, it does have some protection here, no question about it. Got your little port right here so you can get to your oil filter and your... Uh, oil pan drain plug if you do your own maintenance which is something a lot of us do so there you go uh surprisingly amount of, a good amount of ground clearance not fantastic but certainly better than your average passenger car so i like it good little truck and now we are on the interior of this portage I really like that name, by the way, Kia. I think that's, that's nice. What do we have here? Well, we have here your basic, completely virtual instrument cluster. Cluster. And uh, as is the way of the Kia and the Hyundai and the Genesis, you have a, uh, a few different choices you can make in terms of how your instrumentation appears in said cluster. So, we're currently residing at Classic A. Let's go to Classic B. Whoa, I kind of like that. It's got kind of a chrome sort of a effect below all the instrument, uh, uh, all the, you know, the fonts there, or whatever you call them. Uh, then we'll go to Classic C, which is uh, kind of a, a normal sort of thing. But if you'll notice, the numbers are, are sort of digitally digital. You know, they look kind of like uh, Colossus, the Foreman Project. Boy, is that an old movie that none of you have seen. Now, we go, now, as you may remember with some of this, we had cubes. We had the cube, which I, I kind of liked, the cube that was on, uh, oh gosh, I think it was the Hyundai Kona Electric, maybe? But anyway, this one does not have the cube. This has what they call dynamic. Look at there. Woo. That's kind of interesting. You got your sky up there. And I don't know if there's an occasional airplane, but there does appear to be a city there, which is interesting because we're nowhere near no cities out here. Well, you know, sizable cities. But I think I'll stick with your classic A. That's probably where I want to be. But naturally, they also have a link to the drive mode cluster. And... Uh, that's interesting. We'll get into that in just a second. Now, I have to share with you, I mentioned before, something very, very strange happened to me when I first was moving this car around after they dropped it off. And let me show you what happened. This is really interesting. If you look right here, this is our uh, climate control Sentra. And a beautiful climate control Sentra it is. You have everything you need. You have both the uh, temperature settings for the left and the right also known as zone settings, and your automatic uh, thermostat uh, selection if you want to go that way, or you can go manual. We're on fan manual at the moment. Now watch what happens when I do this here. Hang on. All right. Now turn off, and then in a minute, let's see if it does this. What, what happened to me earlier was fascinating. I'll open the door. That might help. Bye now. We'll say yeah. Check the rear seat. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there now. Okay. Can you see that? You can see that. It is now completely blank. We have a left knob and a right knob, and there we are. So I got in the car and I put my foot right down there on that thing right there, that brake pedaler there, and started the car as I have just done for you now. And uh, shut up. And uh, what happened? Well, nothing happened, right? We have everything pretty much the same as it was. But when I, I swear to you, when I turned this car on the first time, it had radio controls here. And on the left side, this knob right here indicated on, uh, it like on off switch and volume. And this one over here, 
right here was tuning except get this now it was backwards if you turn the right knob you, the volume went up and down and you could press the knob and it, the radio would turn off and you go over to the left knob and that was your actual tuning where the power thing was now as you can see right now it's it is 100 percent pure climate control but when I did this, I swear that's what it did. It told me it was a radio control unit. All these graphics in here were completely different. So I don't know what happened. Uh, apparently nothing. Uh, and there is a slight chance I may have lost my mind. I mean, that's I'm, I'm not putting that out. But the reason I feel like it may have actually happened is like you saw, when you turn off the engine, all these graphics that look like they're permanent are not. The whole thing just turns off. And there you are. So, anyway, the central display is your is is a lovely display. Actually, it's very clear, very easy uh, to remember. Here's your navigation, right there. And let's display the map, shall we? Uh, I guess we won't. All right, fine then. Fine. Be that way. Where the heck is the? Uh, I can't find anything on. Well, there's a map button somewhere. Oh, wait a minute. Go back to home. I got it. I got, I'm right, I got you right here. There we go. There we go. Nice, huh? It's very, very widescreen. A uh, lot of cinematic, kind of like Lawrence of Arabia. And that's great. And uh, it, so far, the navigation, as I've used, is, is a pretty average interface, but it's a very good navigation system. It's I, I, Kudos to the navigation system. All right, now down here, we have your drive control center. We have a completely conventional shifter which i like and it does of course have what this eight speed transmission does have a manual mode you kick it over like so up and down back to drive back to park very straightforward you've seen this a billion times now here we have our drive mode selector selector selection selector Sele selector that sounds like a new marvel villain selector I will choose to destroy you, you know, well, anyway, they can't, Louis D'Esposito better not, I know Louis from way back, and he's now an executive producer, and he probably has a house as big as, what, what the heck is it called that Orson Welles had out there on uh, Shangri-La or something, anyway, uh, it does have a central locking differential since this is a uh, all-wheel drive model. And that is excellent to have that so you can lock the front and rear when the going gets rough. And our drive mode selection, let me, let me go up here. You turn the knob and what happens? What happens? Normal, sport, smart, uh, that's not for me, and snow. So it has all these different settings that fine tune your traction uh, situation. You got your downhill braking control, also known as downhill cruise control to some. Not many. And, uh, uh, oh, what's this? Oh, there's your cameras. Look at there. This has the rear camera, an excellent rear camera, and, of course, your 360. It's, it's simulated to 360, you know. It's mostly done with, there's a camera in each mirror, camera in the back, camera in the front, and all the rest is software. The very clever software. Again, shall I say it again? I will. Kudos to the developers of the software. Very, very nice. So that's basically your front, uh, your front situation. Uh, it's very easy to get familiar in this car right away. Uh, Kia controls, sort of like Hyundai uh, controls, which is their parent company, are, are all, have always been very straightforward. But I'll tell you what, I am still very curious about this fella. And will it do it again? Will I have a ghostly uh, interaction that changes it to the radio controls? I've looked, and I'll let you know, but I haven't found anything in the key literature that implies that something was going on that is explainable right off the bat. Other than, you want to know my explanation? I think for the uh, markets where you have right-hand drive, uh, which would probably be a lot of Asian markets like Japan as well as the UK, uh, quite possibly that instead of having the climate controls here they do have the radio controls there and it would explain why this side on the right side would be on off and volume and this side would be tuning because I'm guessing 
that's the way it is because it's you know exactly swapped over on the right hand side i have never driven a british vehicle and noticed notice the way the radio works if the knobs are on the, the side so that the volume and on off is closer to the driver so but i think that's what happened and for some reason <laughs> for a brief second this car thought it was somewhere else somewhere exotic with palm trees maybe someplace like that maybe the bahamas they could have been in the bahamas hmm. anyway uh, we'll look at some more things, but uh, nice interior Kia on this Sportage, very nice. Well, guess what? Don't you love updates? Uh, I discovered that, much to my amazement, and this is not a universal concept when it comes to me, I'm not entirely crazy yet, but the fact of the matter is there was some shenanigans going on, and I... I mentioned that I went over the uh, Kia literature, what I looked at was some press stuff, and I didn't consult the sacred parchments. The book of all knowledge known as the owner's manual. It's a, it's a pretty amazing read these owner, owner's manuals. A lot of times you can find things like information. What the heck is going on? In this case, here we are with our uh, climate control panel. Now watch this. Ooh. Oh my God. As you can see, it has changed over to like a main control panel and you got your radio knobs the knobs that used to control temperature are now controlling the radio so that's what had happened apparently I had bumped it hit it somehow when I first got the car and it did change from one to another but that's not all remember all the stuff I said about the knobs and the tuning being on the opposite side of the uh, volume knob because the car thought it was in Bermuda. Mm. Well, it turns out that that's not quite the case. And I will show you. This is even weirder to me, actually. If we go over here to setup, and up here, what do we got? Ooh, button. What the heck is this? So we press button, and we go down. <laughs> This is wild to me. And then there's vulture and uh, vulture and volume and tuning knob. And it also releases the vultures if, you know, if that's your thing. Uh, but right now, so <laughs> we have it on uh, the radio mode. Now, where is the on off? Well, that's not it. So over here to the opposite side where it says, see, tune and file. That's actually the on off switch and the volume you see and this over here is is the tuner so what do I do about that if I don't like it that way you press swap and now over here it's back to what we would consider in these United States normal turn it on volume and then over here there's the different stations. You see? Amazing, huh? So that's what was going on with that. Now why exactly they did it that way, who knows? I mean, but that's how they decided to do it. And uh, <laughs> it's there for you. You can kind of configure it a little bit. If you want to have the knob switched, you can swap, swap there, swap back. Pretty interesting stuff. Uh, What's really, what's really bad is if you have one of your offspring in the front of the car with you and they discover all these things, you're in big trouble because they're going to they're gonna constantly swap things around because it's interesting, it's different. But that's what happened. No Bermuda, 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 no Bermuda and no insanity at, at this juncture. Anyway, that explains that. Thank you, owner's manual. Read them. They have knowledge. So you see, this is what happens. You just use a little bit of common sense, like the big rock in front of you. You don't run right over it. You go off to the side, like so, and let the wheels and the suspension do their duty. And the rest of this is pretty straightforward. Most people can deal with this just fine. Along. 
with our little sportage. Look at this great big boulder. Now, what do I want to do? Do I want to drive right over it? No. Like, yep, bonk. Yep, bonk. And don't drive like an idiot. That's one of the best things you can do is don't drive like an idiot. It's amazing how uh, just before I activated this uh, audio device, we had some real good music going on in here. Real good, but I'd share it with you, but I can't. So, the, so there, you had to be here, which is also the name of a really good Jimmy Buffett live album going back to the 80s. I believe is when it came out. But anyway, uh, the little Sportage, as we sojourn in our Sportage, is proving to be a very versatile little car. And I'm still very happy with this uh, normally aspirated, non turbocharged 2.5 liter inline four engine because it, uh, it does well. It seems happy to just purr along. And uh, we shall see. It's telling me I'm getting 24.9 miles per gallon, which is 25 is what a, a compact SUV in general. That's what the basic class makes. Unless you're smart enough to have a hybrid, in which case in this hot weather, and yeah, it's hot. You're tired of that word, aren't you? Hot, hot, hot. No Buster Poindexter for you. See, another thing it's just been a Kia uh, trademark for a while now as the ride is nice. M most of the cars I've been testing the last couple of months uh, have all been quiet cars. They don't have excessive. And if you look at how aggressive the tread pattern is on these tires, you might expect more tire noise, but it's not bad. It's not bad at all. And it also seems to work uh, as far as the amount of off-road capability may be aided by the aggressive tread pattern. They still work really good on the road in terms of cornering. I haven't driven in the rain yet because it hasn't rained in so long. I need Burt Lancaster to come save us all. $100 in advance. Uh -huh. And inside of 24 hours, you will have rain. You mean it? Real rain? Rain is rain, brother. It comes from the sky. It's a wetness known as water. Aquapura. Mammals drink it, fish swim in it, little boys wait in it, and the birds flap their wings and sing like sunrise. Water. I recommend it. But here we are in the current temperature. Where is it on this car? Oh, it's right in my face. It's 90 degrees outside, and with the heat index and everything else, it's approximately uh, 212 degrees Celsius, uh, which is, uh, you know, 100 degrees Celsius is boiling, so... Ah, it's warm. But it's fun in a way to have these because it really is a good test for the uh, all the air conditioning systems and the cooling system and everything else. And some of these cars, I tell you what, I tell you what, if a little bit of a grade here. These transmissions have gotten so good in terms of holding the gears when they need to. Uh, the one thing I say I'm missing on this, uh, uh, before I get back to whatever I was talking to, like I'm going to remember what I was talking about. Uh, there does seem to be, I would like some more low-end torque on this particular engine. It almost feels like it is turbocharged because... Uh, the power comes on much higher in the high, in the RPM range, uh, especially the torque seems to be up there too. Uh, I'll look at the chart, look, see what it says. I'll look at the specifications, but I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if the torque peak is is a little higher than. I look, I like my torque peaks around 2,000 RPMs, good, 2,500. That way you can pull out of the corner that way, and you can pull up that rocky trail but this does seem to get around nicely and if you're enjoying this be advised this is only the beginning of the hot weather season that will soon never end it'll be just like in Game of Thrones where summer will go on for several years and then maybe we'll have a winter and it'll be a nasty one 
because of, I don't know, I'd have to talk to uh, uh, Mr. R.R. himself about that. <laughs> Probably he's thought it out, too, uh, in terms of what happens. If one lives in Winterfell, when Winterfell is in the summer all the time for years, and then when winter comes, ooh boy, ah, that was an interesting little suspension bang bit of rebound. You can always make these things firmer. Always. Uh, all right. That's oh, if I may indicate at this time, look at the size of this radiator on here. You can look through the grill there. It goes all the way across and all the way down. That is a very substantial cooling device. That's good. You want to see that. Because that will help reduce your chances of overheating. As well as just keep your engine happier. I mean, that's all what it's all about. Cool is happy, baby. Well, I went and told you at the beginning of this that this was a cool car, and now I have offered fourth physical evidence that it's cool enjoy yourselves folks be careful out there watch for dogs i think this man's crazy that's what i am crazy i woke up this morning and i looked at the world and i said to myself the world's gone completely out of its mind and the only thing that'll set it straight is our first class a number one lunatic well here i am I'm feeling.